let's talk about collisions. So the big idea here is that when objects collide in the absence of external forces, the net momentum of the objects before the collision equals the net momentum of the objects after the collision. So you guys already know what the equation for momentum is. Remember it's P, which is what momentum is, equals mass times velocity. So if we sum up the net momentum or the total momentum of the system before the collision, it will equal the total momentum after the collision. So this is called the conservation of momentum. And you guys have probably heard this term before, conservation of, like conservation of mass in chemistry. And then we talk about conservation of energy also in physics. We'll talk about that later this year. So again, this is another one of those themes with the conservation of momentum. So with this, we do get an equation. So here, like I said, the net momentum before the collision, remember net just means total. So the total momentum before the collision is equal to the total momentum after the collision. And if we want to do this in symbols, we have P, which is our symbol for momentum, net before or initial equals P net after or final. Um, now, usually when we're talking about collisions, we're just talking about two objects colliding together. So I'll call, call them object one and object two. So we end up getting the momentum of object one plus the momentum of object two initial, sorry, Rowdy's barking, equals the momentum of object one final plus the momentum of object two final. Now, of course, we know that momentum is equal to mass times velocity, so we can now plug that in for our momentums for object one and two. So we get the mass of object one times the initial velocity of object one. Notice how I only have the initials and the finals on the velocity. This is because the momentum is changing because the velocity is changing, right? Those objects, their mass itself, those masses aren't changing. It's the velocities that are going to be changing here. So we get the mass one times the initial velocity of mass one plus mass two times the initial velocity of mass two equals mass one times the final velocity of mass one plus mass two times the final velocity of mass two. And then here, the net takeaway here is just the sum of the momentum vectors is the same before and after the collision. Now here I also want you to be really careful with the signs of your velocity vector. Remember velocity is a vector which means it has both magnitude and direction and we denote direction with signs so a positive or a negative. So if you say, for example, that mass one has an initial velocity of a positive five meters per second and say it's going to the right, if it goes backwards after the collision, you have to call that a negative velocity. All right, so the direction matters here. So there's two types of collisions, elastic collisions and inelastic collisions. Elastic collisions are exactly what they sound like. You probably hear that word elastic and think, oh, okay, it means like a rubber band. We're bouncing, right? Like an elastic rubber ball or something like that. So elastic collisions are when things bounce off one another. Elastic collisions, collisions occur when objects collide without being permanently deformed and without generating heat. So this is like a very technical definition. Um, but here, just the objects don't stick together and they bounce off one another. And here, in elastic collisions, kinetic energy is conserved. Kinetic energy is just the energy of motion. So our energy of motion here is conserved in elastic collisions. In Inelastic collisions. <laughs> this occurs when objects become distorted or generate heat during a collision. Um, in a totally inelastic collision, which doesn't really exist in the world, usually it's a combination of you know inelastic and elastic. Um, but in a totally inelastic collision, objects stick together. All right, they stick together. Momentum here is still conserved, so you're still going to use the conservation of momentum equation, but kinetic energy is not conserved because if they stick together, they're gonna to move slower afterwards, so you have less energy of motion at the end. So an example of this could be um, two freight cars. One is moving toward the other at four meters per second. When they connect, when they collide, they stick together and then they're going to move off at a slower velocity. So they both have the same final velocity. Now with inelastic collisions, um, like I just said, the final velocity is going to be the same at the, 
and after they collide because the objects stick together in their final state. So therefore, we can write a new equation for this. Now again, we know that the momentum is still conserved, so you get total momentum initial equals total momentum final. And then to write all that out again, we get mass of object one times the initial velocity of object one plus mass of object two times the initial velocity of object two equals mass of object one times the initial, sorry, final velocity of object one plus mass of object two times the final velocity of object two. So like I said, because that final velocity is the same, what we can do here is we can factor this out because again, final velocity of object one equals final velocity of object two. So we can do this, just final velocity times the quantity mass one plus mass two for that final equation for inelastic collisions. Now you have to remember here that this is only for inelastic collisions. You can't use this for elastic collisions because the final velocity is not the same because in elastic collisions, the things don't stick together. It's only in inelastic collisions that they do stick together.